Chandani here with the Chandani Conversation Series. Very elated and blessed to have Donna DeLore with us, world-renowned musician, dancer, kirtan musician, somebody that was in the music industry heavily. I'll let you talk about that if you want to, but I think it's a significant part of your journey, which mm -hmm. will probably lead to a lot of what we're going to speak about today. And just to encourage other people to listen to the lives of those who have been through challenges, those who have been through phases of our lives that have resulted into who we are and what we stand for today. And it's mm -hmm. uh, such a privilege to have you on with us. And many people love you, adore you, know you and your work, your music, which in the yoga world is just legendary. We have mm -hmm. all raised our children to your sweet sounds. Mm, thanks. <laughs> and knowing you for all these years and raising our kids in the same path it's just a pleasure to have you on and for people that are new to you and your music i'd love for you to just share who you are what your background is before we get into our subject matter for today donna delory hello everyone i'm really happy to be here with you and um i i began i was very fortunate to grow up in a musical family my dad was a musician and a producer so i really I got to be raised around artists and having a father that not only did music, but got to do something he was really passionate about was so inspiring to me. So of course I wanted to be in music and I realized when I was very little, I could sing because I used to sing along with the radio. I used to sing along with Stevie Nicks and many artists that I love like Linda Ronstadt. Um, and I, I knew I could sing and I knew I could harmonize. So I, I just, I sensed that I had that talent as well. I started singing professionally when I was about nine, eight or nine. I did a dog food commercial. And I started being like taken out of school and going to do jobs. So I was getting that recognition from a, you know, being young, a very young age, getting that recognition of sharing my my talents and and working. I mean, it's I don't know how many of you guys out there started working that young. But it definitely puts you, it, it helps put you, put you on a certain path. And, and I just loved it. I was so passionate about it. So I, I grew up singing and doing a lot of jobs. And so I was a professional. And, uh, you know, going through my high school years, my dad and I moved to Nashville. And I was then wanting to be an artist. So my dad was producing me country and gospel. And by that time, when in Nashville, I had met a, a, um, a bunch of people who were, you know, my, my spiritual journey had, had begun already because I had discovered the church of uh, religious science, a certain church that was in North Hollywood. And my dad used to call it, we used to joke and say great, we called it the greatest hits of all religions. And it was just, you know, the minister was incredible. He, he used, he was speaking of a lot of Eastern philosophy and it was really resonating deeply with me. And to be like, know, that, was that the 15 years old? Was that the original agape? Yes. And we used to sing, you know, at the end of the service, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And at the end, uh, with God as well, what's the end? And let it begin with me. And we'd all like hold hands and raise our hands. Imagine that holding hands now. Raise our hands in the air. And I remember like being a teenager to you know, you're so cool as a teenager, but to get into that and open my heart and be open to this community and to receive these teachings, it was really powerful for me. It's something I shared with my dad. And we went to, we moved to Nashville and we were basically like in that whole country music scene. And I couldn't find that. I'd already gotten on that path. I, I met some people in Nashville and I used to go to the vegan restaurant and, the, you know, I actually worked in a vegetarian restaurant there. I was trying to find my people there. And also, so there was, there was that, I was kind of in that, um, in that scene that was going on in Tennessee in the eighties. And then I was also in the music business and I ended up going back to, to Los Angeles because it, I, I really was a dancer too. And I couldn't find anywhere in Nashville to dance. I, I just, you know, I was a kid from LA and people used to tell me you're, you dress too hip. You need to go back to LA. <laughs> 
and they knew I danced and everything. They're like, go back to LA. You're young. Go, go, uh, in a pay your dues and knock on doors and everything. So I did. And I ended up, you know, literally sleeping on studio couches to try to get producers to hire me to sing. And I had, you know, 10 jobs and everything, the whole story ended up doing, starting to work in the music business, you know, more as an adult ended up getting, I went on a lot of auditions. I got parts. Sometimes they fell through. Sometimes they were dance jobs. I ended up getting a job touring with Madonna when I was 22 and that changed my life completely. Um, that it was an incredible experience. I mean, it was mind blowing, you know, to be that young and have that big of an experience. We were playing stadiums. Okay. I went from doing nothing. I mean, just singing on records and being a studio background singer. And I had a band I was in alternative kind of like rock set. Remember that band rock set, the girl guy kind of thing. And then, then I get this job with Madonna and I'm, I'm singing, I'm dancing, which I grew up as dancing, you know, training a lot that helped me get the job. So, and then I'm, then I'm swooped up in that whole scene being, you know, in fame, being into that, you know, and, and it, it's a real, at that age, I mean, how can you not be completely immersed in your own ego? And, you know, it took a while to separate that from, this is my passion. Music is my passion. What fulfills me? You know, honestly, it took into my thirties to really get real with that. And to really realize like, oh, that was wonderful ride I went on there. But my passion is really about music. That's where I came from. And, you know, mainstream pop culture influenced and conditioned me to think that I had to be, I had to be a pop star. And that's what I got from people, outside people. You're going to be a star. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. You have this, oh my God, your talent, your voice and everything. And, and ended up, I ended up being with Madonna for years and years. And I ended up getting my own contract with MCA Universal. They were grooming me to be a star. And I did the whole big deal, the big contract, wind and dine, private jet tours, radio tours, the whole thing. I ultimately was like in Scotland in a dance club singing to a remix I had never even heard of my song. It just this like, you know, nothing wrong with remixes. I've done well with remixes and in the dance clubs and everything. But I mean, it, I just remember being alone. I, did, my, I didn't even have my manager with me, you know. And I just was like, this isn't, this isn't fulfilling. This isn't what I want. You know, I had, you know, I'd, I'd carry my spiritual books and my Joseph Campbell. I was really into mythology and power of myth, hero with a thousand faces. You know, I, I would, I would carry these teachings around and that would be my comfort. And I knew that was, that was my, where I really found the peace and truth. But here I was in this world of trying to be something, trying to attain a certain kind of success that um, finally that whole thing just fell apart. I went home, I got out of my deal. I went to Guitar Center and I bought uh, an ADAP machine and it was like eight track recording machine, a Fender Rhodes and a drum. And I started making my own independent music and I started working with a cellist. I started playing harmonium and I didn't have anyone to please you know, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to write a hit to be on the radio because there was such pressure in that. And I realized now looking back, that was completely stifling. It just wasn't my path, you know? And so I ended up finding my path as an independent artist. I was really fortunate because at that time, the internet, you know, music and, and uh, distribution on the internet for indie artists was really uh, so accessible. So I got on, you know, CD baby and I started putting up my CDs and I put all my own money into my records and my artwork and my touring in a touring van. And it was so much more satisfying, you know, being at a Virgin Megastore in-store in San Francisco and having 50, 100 people there and playing my music was ultimately way more satisfying for me. And then I, I just felt free to just go in the direction I wanted to go in and sing songs about my own feelings about my life, my connection with God and nature and humanity and relationships, the depth of relationships that I wanted to have. And I wanted to talk about whether it was with my grandmother or um, a partner, you know, and I, I wanted to just 
I, I, I really admire and respect artists like Peter Gabriel, Bono, you know, that are, that are writers themselves and they go to that place with their music, you know, and <clears throat> Robbie Robertson, you know, I, I wanted to do that too. So then I ended up, um, actually yoga was of course exploding and the yoga music scene was really happening in Los Angeles with Dave Stringer, Saul David Ray, you know, Garish. I mean, these were my friends in my community, David Newman. Um, just, we, we were getting together and jamming and playing music and finding inspiration in this time. And I had, uh, someone gave me a, a harmonium at a party, actually. It was like a big party and, and I was like, what's that? And my friend said, oh, take it home. So it was, you know, it wasn't planned <laughs> that I would start playing that instrument. And I started playing my songs on that instrument and it's just started simplifying everything. And it started changing what I was writing and everything got a lot more meditative. And um, it was no longer just about a relationship I was talking about, you know, it was more transcendent. And it was more ultimately where I, I wanted to go with music. You know, I wanted to go to a place where you, you feel it and your left brain isn't engaged all the time. And, you know, I wanted to just make ambient music and explore different textures and sounds with my voice. And when I started singing the mantras, I had never had this experience of, I wasn't singing anymore. I was just witnessing what was happening. And I wasn't, I wasn't the singer anymore. I was just letting it come out. And, um, and I remember that on the first album, I made the first mantra record and it was effortless, you know? And I thought, okay, because a company came to me and said, we want you to do a mantra CD and used to be CDs. Remember that? <laughs> and, um, and I was like, well, I know three mantras and I know, you know, a lot of things that we chant in our yoga class and, and it just came out naturally. So I've been on, I'm a singer songwriter, but I've also been uh, incorporating the mantras into my music. Even I, I'm working on a meditation album now. And I, I thought, you know, I'd be very, um, very dead can dance and not maybe not have words, you know, more sounds with my vocals and uh, the mantras always just show up and there they are. And okay, great. It's, it's the music comes usually comes first and then I'll kind of put the mic on and things come out and then a mantra just comes out. So that's, that's where I'm at musically now. That's amazing. Yeah. That I didn't know about your past that your father was so instrumental in your musical career and also the path of spirituality was introduced to you at such a young age but it was almost like you had to go through your own leela and own growth mm -hmm. of life experience you had to rebel in your own unique way to then come back to where you were first introduced to having I think a spiritual awakening before you start, or as you were moving to bhakti and kirtan music that seemed to happen for you after you got into your yoga community. And for us that have been in the yoga community for so long, we've seen, heard and watched your music evolve and penetrate. And when you sing, I've watched you sing before in concert, like mm -hmm. back in we used to have concerts at yoga studios now that you like we would all look at you and you would literally be in a different world like you were definitely not present to the audience even I think when you mm -hmm. when typically kirtan singers devotional singers of music I've experienced firsthand when they sing or when they play they are not really there it's like you said, it's something that comes through you. Absolutely. And how did you at that time justify moving away from the commercialization of your career that was your bread and butter, mm -hmm. taking this definite plunge 
into this experimental devotional space of music that you didn't really have a strategy for. You just said, I feel this is where I'm supposed to be creating and this is what I'm going to do. How did, how did that happen for you? Was it a deliberate decision that I'm sort of giving up the commercial music industry and I'm just going to be a spiritual hippie and sing chant music or were you sort of like not really even thinking about making a choice? Was it just a natural, natural move in that direction for you? Yeah, you know, it wasn't like I was thinking about making a choice, but I remember my manager at the time when we did the contract with Ajna with the record company, she was like, you know, even with the deal, she was like, you don't worry about it. This is like a side thing for you. You know, you're you're on a spiritual path and this will be great for you to do this record, but you'll still be, you know, you'll continue to be a singer songwriter and, and, you know, no big deal with this. And that record ended up being my best selling record, you know, and I didn't, I didn't plan that. I just went in to be, to be honest and make a beautiful record. And I just let stuff flow through me. And I'm telling you, I was saying things, I didn't even know what they meant. And it was coming through like, a certain sound would come through and then I'd find the mantra of that sound and I'd look it up and it was, I was learning as I went. And that's why I call that first record baby's first mantras. It was very just an innocent journey for me. It wasn't like I was a scholar or I was a teacher. And then um, it's kind of happened the other way around for me. Um, I also had, I was a single mom, you know, I had, I was in my 30s. I got pregnant with someone I was dating from yoga class who was younger than me. And it was just this situation. I knew I wanted to have this baby. He wasn't going to be there. And I consciously took that, you know, made that decision. I was at that place in my life. It was right for me. But there was a lot of fear. And there was a lot of, you know, I got, it drew me to my community more. And I was, I was vulnerable. You know, I needed it. My soul needed it. You know, and I was reaching out to the, you know, my yoga teachers in my community. And I think of being, because of being so vulnerable, I was so open. And those were the tools that I was using for myself at that time. And it just ended up being, you know, these are tools that I use now. And it's, it's not something you can really analyze, you know, when you find a mantra or sound vibration or something that works for you. It works for you and you love it. And it's like, I, I always go back to it. And I'm always, I always thought, well, I love singing all different languages. You know, I do. I love singing Spanish and French and trying out like a native American prayer, something like that. But I feel, and some people were, um, would ask that first record, oh, are you ever going to do more of like sing more in Sanskrit and do the prayers and mantras? And I didn't know, you know, but it is continued on and maybe, through, um, you know, teachers and people I've been inspired by that that's been a big part of it. Um, Sharon Gannon, Shiva Ray, Micheline Berry, you know, that are my friends and people that I collaborate with, you know, we're, we're on the, we're, we're on a, on the same path. And there are people that I just feel, um, you know, when you find people that are like-minded, it is so powerful and it's it, it's a beautiful thing to find that. And that's what I've found in the, you know, yoga and wellness community. I've always been there in that place. Um, also a big part of the shift that happened, my mom died when I was 16 of breast cancer. And I think that when, when you're that young and you lose a parent, especially me also being a young woman, it put me on this path of, um, you know, I suddenly, Nashville, I got into health foods and, you know, I was really, I was on more of a conscious path of wellness and being a young adult in Los Angeles, I was connecting with that community. It was very natural because I decided I wanted to be healthy and I, and I was so, I was so grateful for my own, you know, having seen like a parent go away like that and realizing the lifestyle choices that they had made for themselves and um and their own not being satisfied with their life you know 
it's a, it's also a big reason why I just have to do what I love. You know, it is my saving grace for, for my well-being. And I think when you really understand that about yourself, it's, uh, it's powerful. How did, how did motherhood, because you were saying that Sophia came in your early thirties when you were sort of really into your yoga practice and yoga community, how did, and I remember you those days, you know, you had this baby and we, you were always at the gatherings and Sophia was so much a central part of everything mm -hmm. we were about when we would see you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how did you becoming a mother change you and affect your music and your lifestyle? In, in, in sort of a, obviously in a general way, I'm sure specifically there are so many things you can, you can tell us, but Sophia's coming into the world, you being this mother in your life at that time, what was the, what were the biggest changes that happened to you and for you at that time with your music, with your lifestyle? Well, the biggest thing was that, you know, I'd gone so long in my life was about me and everything was about me and you know to to be of 100 percent of service to to be serving and be there for all the sudden with this other human being it can it really changes you when you wholeheartedly go into that and i went in at first on my own doing that so it was a it was such a huge life shift you know and i i honestly didn't know if i could do it and, and then, you know, there she was next to me and I'm holding her and we're, we're laying together and sleeping together. And there was my, my, one of my soulmates was there. And, and I, I knew I had to do this. It was right for me. It was right for my soul and for hers. And there was a certain agreement there, you know, but I had to change a lot, you know? I mean, I say to Sophia, I say to my kids, like, I was really different before I had you guys, <laughs> you know? I was, um, I had so much time just focused on myself and to be an artist. I mean, so many artists are, they have to be self-centered. They have to keep that focus on themselves and, um, what they're creating, what they, what their vision is. And, and now I think, I think that a bit of that, of course, has been sacrificed because having children and being there for them and you are, your creativity is interrupted. It's just the way it goes. It's up to you to pick back up and keep continuing on, right? And not get down on yourself that things, you didn't do things quick enough, or you didn't finish that record like you used to finish a project, you know? And over the years, I've made a lot of records and having kids, and I've made them a big part of the process. Like I used to have my studio in the house, and I loved it that way, because they would just come in and I'd be recording, you'd hear them on the recording, and we'd have uh, musicians coming in and out of the house all the time. So they were part of that. I love it. I still find old songs or even old, like on that, that album, the lover and the beloved, I hear Sophia as a baby in her little spaceship, little, uh, playhouse thing that she was in. I could hear her squealing on that record, you know, so sometimes I'll hear old records and I, you know, I, I just, I'm so happy that they got to be part of that. And She's doing her own thing now and finding her way. And, and people always say to me, they, they'll come back to it because it's home. It's where they're from, you know, this community. And, and not that they, she has to be like hanging out at Wanderlust instead of Coachella, you know, but I think that's, that's in her. And, and I'm happy for that, you know. The yoga community was in that time. I mean, it was just so beautiful that we could all gather and, and it was beautiful. The music was beautiful. The intention, um, the food, I felt like it was a real healthy environment for my, my children. And my husband's an integrative doctor. So it really like, you know, it was, we were all, we were all in it together. Um, and I think, you know, just by raising children in that environment, it's, it's, they get, they get influenced by it. And, you know, I'm happy she has that and music. And now Sophia is playing, like she plays bass clarinet in school and she's also studying guitar. So I'm trying to get her in the studio 
because she's an, she's amazing with making her playlist and her knowledge that she has just educated herself about music and world music and her the versatility of her taste in music is incredible. Like she's constantly turning me on to music, you know, inspiring me. And she loves making the playlists and finding new music. And so I'm trying to get her in the studio and just just something she can do to to be a creator and to get her to record and play everything. And not that I'm trying to push her to be an artist or a, a producer, but I think she'll get a lot of satisfaction out of that, you know, and a great creative outlet for her. You know, and then Lucy is about, all about animals. So we're spending now, you know, especially since the pandemic began and we all, we had the stay home orders. We've been taking care of chickens, taking care of horses, you know, really connecting with animals. And that's been, you know, life is, you just, it presents itself. The, the time and the opportunity, you have to go with it. You have to ask yourself, okay, what, what good can come out of this and what, what, what is there there for me to learn? And I'm trying to be as open as possible to that, you know, with the pandemic, dealing with my fears on that initially, and then finally coming around to a whole nother place with it. And, um, and, and what's going on now with, with pro the protests and with people joining together and rising up for this, um, for this justice and I'm trying to, you know, I'm in Topanga, I'm in the mountains and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, re-educate myself and listen really right now and, and process a lot of like my feelings and how I can be there for my friends, you know, and, and really like wanting to like create this, the music now get into that place of compassion and understanding and listening and um, go back to that place of wanting to just give, what can I give, you know, my music. So just continue every day. I just get in that studio and create something. That's you know? really inspiring to hear because for all of us around the world in different environments and situations it's reinforced to me as well that times of strife and struggle are times of creativity and innovation absolutely and if we can just have the patience and the courage to listen to that call mm -hmm. each one of us can be directed to serve in ways we've never even felt to serve before so I resonate with what you're saying. I was actually going to ask you before you said it yourself, has the circumstances over the last two, three, four, five months and coming up to today affected yeah. your music and how as an artist, as just a human being, how can the circumstances of our collective lives not affect us personally and in the path of our work or service to the world? So does this sound like there's, a new album coming or, or definitely there's um i mean i've been working on the meditation album and there was one piece that was really inspired by the people that were on the front lines the healthcare workers you know i was getting a lot of people writing to me saying that they're nurses they work in the hospitals or paramedics and on their way to work they've been they listen to my music mm -hmm. and it, giving them just a, a sense of inner peace and strength to give them strength to uh, what they're going to deal with that day to help them. So I was working on a piece of music, just thinking, you know, I just read those words and it's like anyone you hold someone in prayer or you're, you're, you're feeling them so deeply. So when I was working on the music, that's, that's what I was feeling. So when I hear the song back now, that's what is embodied in this music to me. And there's a piece um, last week after the murder of George Floyd, um, and I watched that video. And, and I, I mean, it was immediate when I watched it. I saw a friend of mine post it, the first posting I'd seen, and I looked it up. And I was, I mean, like we all were, so deeply sad. And, you know, these all of us are dealing with these feelings. We don't know 
we don't know what to do with it. You know, I'm trying to get into conversations with my family. I feel somewhat isolated in Topanga now and with the pandemic. And I, you know, I really had this feeling of like, who can I talk to about this? You know, and I started working on this forgiveness prayer. And through that, I mean, it's just, you know, music and prayers and the, the certain words that can trigger and bring you to that place. I just was just going into my heart and, and it was a processing of, of my life and, and my relationships, relationships with my brothers and sisters and, and my family and everything. And, and ultimately getting to that vulnerable place of just pure love in your heart. And you want that, of course, for everyone. You want that peace and that love, that acceptance for everyone. And um, I mean, I see so many beautiful things that are going on as well, you know, as the, to really, I, to really, there is something about not looking away from, from the racism and really looking at it, you know, because it's not just something that was in the past to really, really realize it's still there. It's difficult for people, for everyone. It's very difficult, but it's the way it is. And it's like, you know, I've been listening to Michael Moore's podcast. He's like, you know, wake up people. This is who we are, you know? And, and I realized like even messages that I got from my grandmother, who was a beautiful, beautiful woman, but because she was raised in the South and little things she used to say to me, about my friends and things like that. I, I just makes me so grateful that I, it is stopped here. And with my children, we have these conversations and, and it, it's a whole different, thank God, it's a different world that they're growing, they're growing up in now. And they can't even, they can't even imagine it. You know, but but the, because of the time that I grew up in, and you too, you know, we may have known family members. We we may have had firsthand experiences, and they they're just seeing it on the news and that it exists in the world. And to to sit down and have those conversations with them, especially Lucy, who's eleven. To um, it, it's been really beautiful. To to see her, to to realize her point of view. And the children, how loving they are when they're not conditioned in a certain way, you know, to see us being um, separate from one another and having, you know, been influenced by whatever it, hatred they felt from their parents or their family or, or their community. So I've just been like being in, of course, gratitude. And, and now I'm just like, what can we do to help? What can we do? I'm just constantly asking myself, what can I do? What can I do? Having those conversations is so important, I feel. And it cuts across so many different topics of yeah. the new generation, the way we raise our men, the mm -hmm. way we deal with women and who they are in the world, the way we deal with race, which is the most cutting issue right now because it's led to so much bloodshed and division and systemic oppression but from that nucleus of deep racism deep oppressive cultural racism so many other oppressions have occurred yes across the globe you said yourself not just in this country it's around the world we're highlighting it here in america because we live here and the incidents are happening here in our face and they're being televised mm. but across the world we have systemic racism of and of course and so being i think the first generation that is speaking to our children in this way has a certain fearlessness and a certain trepidatiousness to it as well because we are uncertain just the way we have all these different sexualities now that we're all mm -hmm. trying to respect and understand and decide yeah. and, and 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 develop and evolve for our kids the same is true for a lot of different areas that are new to us so this idea of forgiveness without holding the accountability is so important in every industry 
whether it's music or art or politics or medicine or agriculture or anything. So mm -hmm. I think that as responsible human beings in this time and age, you said it best yourself, to allow ourselves to be vulnerable is a very new concept for us as, as adults. What do you have to say about your vulnerability? I know that great artists, great musicians have always made their best art from their sense of vulnerability and sensitivity. Do you feel like your vulnerability and sensitivity has heightened throughout the years now that you're in your later years, raising your children, dealing mm -hmm. with circumstances? Or do you feel that you've become more sophisticated in how you're vulnerable and how you're sensitive? Yeah, I always want to, you know, I think that is something that's in all of my music is that vulnerability, because that's when I play music, I just feel so open, you know, like after I do a show, I just want to like hug everyone and, 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 you know, if there's something that's bothering me that I'm going through with someone, and maybe something I haven't let go of, and I can play my music, I mean, the music is the tool to let that go. So I am always going to embrace that and it's in all the music, you know, I don't, I think in itself, music just opens you up and takes you and especially it takes me to that place. And, and like I was telling you about when I was singing the forgiveness prayer and working on this, um, it's just from that most vulnerable place. And I love it that something can resonate in a certain way to me and it's powerful and it's in, in the moment, I'm like, this is my healing right now. And I'm doing this and I press record and I'm recording my voice and I'm doing more and then I'm going to put all these sounds that I hear. And then I just feel so grateful that I can put that out to the world as my giving. And if 10 people, if that can be something to help 10 people, that's what I'm here for, you know? And I, I'm grateful I can do that. You know, I, I have like goals and things that I want to like, I, I want to finish this album and I want to, um, I, I want to complete my projects. Like I have three I'm working on right now, actually. Um, but I, I'm just trying to stay in this moment. And like you had said that just take the inspiration of this moment and put it in, it's like a, it documents it, it, it puts it into this time right now. So just be fully present with how I'm feeling. And whether it's something I read, I'm in my studio or I'm doing a post or I'm reading, I go on Instagram and I'm looking at my news and what's happening with my friends and something I may be, I may learn something and be inspired by it. And I let that guide sometimes my creativity and it brings me inspiration, whether it's something really happy or really sad. And that's the way it's been lately, right? Like we've been so sad by what we've learned and seen. And they would be so happy because that's what human beings are capable of, you know, but we've come to this time now that we have to realize that we are really, we are good, you know, we are great and we are love and, and we can be that. And we have the strength. I think we do have the strength to remind each other of that and to remind each other that we need to, we need to let go of the hatred. And it's a, it's a job for everyone. All of us have to do it, right? We have to find that inner peace. I think that knowing inner peace and practicing inner peace in our own circles has had its time and place. And now we need to expand our arms even further as different sides of communities, at different factions, different subcultures and I, I hear the calling of connecting and relating and putting ourselves in other people's shoes and reaching out to other sects that we don't have anything in common with. So mm -hmm. it's and to build those bridges. And I feel that the artists and the musicians of the world really have task on their hands now to come together in this way. And I don't know why, but when you were telling the story of the gospel experiences you had as a child, mm -hmm. I just feel like I can just see you singing with a gospel choir right now on a track or something. Yeah. Um, just cutting across bridges and spaces and reaching our arms out to each other 
in every industry, in every form of art and music. Absolutely. And, and having that feeling of like, I want to be out there with everyone. I want to be hugging everyone. You know, I want to be there. I want to be at those, you know, I want to be at those events and I want to be, and, 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 and you, you do. And when you want that and you have that in your heart, you, you do. I mean, we're all one. You see that oneness. You see that, that we all are feeling there's a collective, you know, energy now, and we're feeling what has to be done. And we're all, I feel all my friends in my community and there's a, there's a, there's an intense calling going on and a focus, of course. And, you know, we deal with one thing at a time. We all realize that we have the power and these kids are looking at this going, wow, wow. Look at how much change they made in one week. This is the power that we have. So instead of just, you know, talk bad about whine about what a bad president we have and everything, you know, things have shifted in a really big way and everything's just come to a head now. So that's the, that's the great thing about what's happening right now, I think. But now I, I, I feel we need to, we are privileged, you know, and we do need to sit back and listen listen and, and educate. And I really feel that way. I, I want to, every night I'm like watching documentaries and going back to the artists that have inspired me. And, um, and, and praising them, you know, respecting and showing my admiration for these beautiful artists that have, that, that continue to inspire and how, how much people mean, you know, how grateful we are for one another, all of us, all of our colors, every color of the spectrum, you know, so it is I, ultimately, I think it is, it, it is a beautiful time for opportunity and, and um, I just want to be there as much as I can right now. So are you going to bring the new album to the streets? Yeah, I got it. You know, I'm working on, uh, you know, there's like a compilation of remixes that I've been working on for a while of songs from my album called Here in Heaven. That's going to be coming out. And then there's um, some other songs that are like kind of like an EP singer songwriter. And then the meditation album is that's the one that I'm just really letting it just letting it flow and it really started, I started going in during the, you know, March 18th, whenever it was, when we were staying home, you know, and it was funny because I was all out in the world. And when I look on my phone and I see all the places in the last year I was, and it's so funny now you look at it, you're like, wow, it was really out there. You know, what a, what a total opposite. <laughs> um, and I was thinking, wow, I really got to get home and just focus on my meditation album. And then there I was, you know, my Lucy starts virtual school and I've got, you know, I've got to like make her lunch in three hours, go up to the studio and start creating. And, and no one could be in the studio with me. So it was just me. So it's crazy. I had to learn how to engineer, you know, and I really like resistant to like sitting in front of a computer. I don't want to like stare at waveforms. I want to just like music is music to me. I don't want it to become so technical. So it's really funny. I've had a resistance to that. But then I realized, well, no one else is going to do it. I got to do this. That's fantastic. You've become an engineer and a producer through. Oh, yeah. Well, I was always the producer, but I was like sitting back while someone else hit all the buttons and everything. And so now, yeah, it's been it's been humbling. <laughs> I beg my engineer friends. I'm like, just run in for an hour and you just do these edits for me. You know, you do the fade. There's things I don't know how to do. Or, or one time I cut out a whole, like four counts, one bar of the song. Somehow I managed to cut out one bar out of the whole song in the middle of the song. So I was like, help <laughs> to never be like, I couldn't fix it. So yeah, it's, um, I, I'm excited. I love to work with people. You know, I just love that interaction and that partnership. 
So I, I am really looking forward to like, when can we sit in the room together again? You know, when can we be with our musicians and not have to be six feet away outside and maybe they have masks on, We, you know, it's hard to do when you're singing, but I don't know. There's so many unknowns. And at the same time, um, it obviously for all of us, it's just a real time to go, to go within and to realize what's most important and, and simplify. I mean, did you feel that, that, you know, when we first start staying home, the first thing is you realize you don't need so much. You don't need so much food, you know, we don't need so much for our kids to do, do we? Crazy. And our life honestly became about like going and take care of, taking care of chickens every day. Mm-hmm. And that was like my, that was like my practice, you know, go and hold these little chickens and raise them and feed them and take, you know, and, uh, and now it's horses, but it's, it's beautiful. We're about to come to a close and I wanted to get your idea of your hope of the future, your vision as a creative visionary, as a musician, as a mother, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, what is your vision? What is your hope for things to come through where we are, where we are in all of this? Yeah, I mean, hopefully coming out of this, um, our, our situation we're at right now, we're gonna make really big change and we're gonna realize what's most important and respect all beings, all humanity and and realize the oneness that we are and how we are in this together and to realize our power to create change and we can take one issue at a time. And that's my hope, you know, that's my hope that we can stay connected that we could stay moving forward on these issues and and be empowered. And of course we have an election coming up, so that's huge. Everyone in with this great energy that's going on right now that we just, that we keep it going. Um, I don't, I mean, there's so many unknowns now with like, it will, when will concerts be? When can we all come together? And so we just, we do whatever we can to stay connected right now. And if you know, let me know if there are things going on that w- ways we can connect or it's outside in a park and we're all, you know, social distancing or whatever's happening. I want to know, you know, I want to stay connected. And I'm, I'm really fine with not being on an airplane, you know, <laughs> that part of it is, um, is good for me to, to, uh, to also realize what, a, what an impact we are making on this planet and what, where we really are. And that's a huge, obviously we all know what a big issue it is. And it's our, that's our future. It's the future of humanity. So I hope that there's greater and greater awareness of that. It's been time to come back home within mm-hmm. our world and home to one another and mm-hmm. to to Mother Earth. Absolutely. And that's gone across the world. I feel everyone has related to that. Some- we, yes, our mother, we all share where we all come from. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's been such a joy connecting with you. I feel that the artists and musicians and poets of the world are the source of all our humanity, Mm. are the pool of all hope and inspiration comes from your creativities and may it continue to blossom and bloom and nourish us and feed us and heal us. And we can't wait to hear more of Donna DeLore and your music and your meditations and your true heartfelt activism in this world. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Thank you so much. Namaste, many blessings. Namaste.